sorry we're a bit late, but we've been doing something that um, you probably will deprecate, which is thinking. <laughs> um, and uh, we, we are slightly concerned um, that this case may have um, gone off on a bit of a, a false start, and that the real question here is whether Section 10 applies at all to REC. Um, and that if it doesn't, uh, what should have happened is the receiver uh, should simply have deducted the salvage um, uh, for, um, under Section 239, I think it is. Um, my Lord, Lord Justice Popplewell will, will come in in a second. Um, and we think that we really need argument as to whether Section 239 applies and the powers of the receiver, because if the receiver is right to say that he has no power to assess salvage over £5,000, something we can't see in the statute ourselves, um, uh, then, then we, the thing may be circular. And it comes, obviously, from the thought we expressed yesterday to Mr Smith, um, that the question that, that, that Section 10 is drafted in the present tense, in use or intended use, uh, which makes no sense when you're talking about 1942, um, and makes no sense in terms of an abandoned wreck either. Um, so Section 10 does seem to be in e inapt or inept, inapt to refer uh, to the situation in this case. But obviously, you and um, Mr. Smith will need a, an opportunity to address argument to that, and indeed to consider whether it's uh, uh, possible for us to um, consider the case in that way. Um, my Lord may want to, to add something. I'm sure he will. Um, yes, uh, the the if, if something is is wreck, that is a carefully defined status, uh, it is, for our purposes, derelict as legally defined, uh, and this cargo was treated as REC and declared to the receiver of REC uh, accordingly. Um, now, if the receiver of REC uh, has power to determine salvage and an obligation as appears to be the case under the statute, only to release against payment of salvage under 226 and um, 239, subject to security being provided. Uh, and if that is a decision for the receiver of REC, uh, then it may be that uh, although proceedings for salvage of a REC are permissible, seems to contemplate that that might occur, they're not necessary in order for a salvor to recover uh, salvage in relation to a wreck. And if that's right, it may be said, well, there's no difficulty in construing Section 10 as uh, having really no application in the case of wrecks, so that the immunity is not removed because if a state retains its immunity in relation to admiralty proceedings, whether in personam or in rem, for salvage of a wreck, that doesn't leave the salvor without a remedy, which was obviously a major concern, uh, as I read it, that the, that the, that the judge had. Now, that, 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 I think, depends on two questions which we haven't really investigated at all. May tell me there's an obvious answer as to why that's that's wrong anyway. It, it, it first of all uh, requires an answer to the question as to whether the receiver of REC has power to determine uh, salvage, which, uh, looking at the Act, it would seem to me that it does, uh, and it does expressly, and one has in the authorities statements of, of what, its, what its practice has been. I had in mind the Lusitania, where Mr. Richard Aikens, as he then was, said what the practice was. Um, I think there's a reference in a more recent case that Mr. Justice says, which was 
that is obviously a question which the judge hasn't dealt with, <laughs> and you haven't addressed us on. Uh, and uh, I am conscious that, the, that in this case there was the letter from the receiver saying that the receiver couldn't do that. Uh, but at the moment that puzzles me. Uh, so there's that question. Uh, and there's also the question uh, as to whether um, immunity could in any event Trading aid, so as to ensure release of the cargo without paying the salvage at all, contrary to uh, what appears in section 236, uh, 226 and 239, and in a way that the judge expressed some surprise if that were the case. But that, that question was parked by, by the judge, and, you, and we haven't had any argument on, on that either. But, but, but speaking entirely for myself, if that were the position, was an alternative satisfactory remedy for a salvor of wreck, but without needing to uh, rely on an exemption from, from immunity under Section 10. And Section uh, Section 10.4 is confined to situations in which, uh, to put it loosely but perhaps in inaccurately, the maritime adventure is still on foot then it becomes really quite straightforward to construe use as meaning what it appears to say. And in, and in 10.4b, it's talking about the use then, which I take to be at the time of the cause of action, uh, of a ship in which goods are being carried in the present sense, sense which is all very difficult to, 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 to square with, with Greg. But uh, it gives no difficulty, I think, if what one's dealing with uh, is um, salvage of a, of a vessel or cargo, uh, which isn't there. So that that was the way my my mind was working, and I don't pretend to have um, uh, researched it fully. And there may be some obvious answers why it's wrong. As I say, I, it does seem to me to depend upon those two points on which we haven't had argument. But that's that's why we've raised it at this stage. I'm most grateful to the water. If I may add to that analysis, uh, that. If there is no uh, route through the Merchant Shipping Act uh, and Section 10 is to be construed as inapplicable to REC, uh, then of course we get into uh, human rights territory uh, and uh, the paragraph uh, 20 in Prestige, which summarises the position, uh, comes into effect uh, because in those circumstances there is uh, potentially at least uh, a breach of uh, human rights uh, which would lead either to the statute being interpreted uh, in a purposive way. I mean, just I, I, I speak for myself, I follow that. I, I follow that point. It's, it's, it's and um, so that's to add to the analysis, if I may say so. Um, what we'd quite like to hear from you on, Mr. Hoffmeyer, and indeed Mr. Smith, is, as, first of all, is there some open and shut answer to my Lord's point? Um, if there is not, uh, and the thing requires argument, which it seems to me at the moment uh, it certainly does, um, what is procedurally the best way of handling the rest, the rest of this appeal? Um, Obviously, it would be a bit of a waste of our time to hear um, marvelous and erudite argument on the restricted theory, uh, which is very interesting, but may not be relevant if our construction of Section 10, our proposed construction of Section 10 and Section 239 in the Merchant Shipping Act is more relevant. So that's what we'd like you to think about. Now, I'm, I'm thinking that having dropped this bombshell on you both without warning this morning, although you may have got a clue from my Lord's request earlier, um, that you may want to take five or ten minutes to take some instructions and perhaps scratch your head um, before telling us your reactions. Is that a reasonable way to proceed? Yes, certainly that sounds like the most sensible before we, we say anything on the hoof, as it were. Maybe better to... Uh, well, it's probably better for you to get your junior's input because I can see that uh, all of them have been thinking as we've been talking. Okay. Well, can, I, can I just, uh, yeah. 
you, you might like to also to consider whether, uh, if one is going down this route of considering further argument on these points, it would be appropriate to involve the receiver of rate in some way as to the receiver's powers, and if so, how, how that would be brought about procedurally. Well, and there's the added additional problem that, in a sense, uh, none of those questions with the subject matter of the application no. before the judge. No, but that's the problem you need to think about. Yes. Um, I, I mean, it may not be possible for us to say more on this appeal uh, than Section 10 does or does not apply. Um, but you need to think about that. And um, Well, I think I would, in the light of this discussion, and because of the human rights angles, I, I would invite your lordships uh, not to rule on the meaning of Section 10 no, no, no. until such time as these other questions have been resolved. But that, that well, I think, is mm. the answer, but, but, but we need to, you need to think about that before you say it, <laughs> sorry, Mr. Sorry. Smith. And also, um, procedurally, we need to find a way of, of not wasting the court's time more than is absolutely necessary. So you, you give some thought, perhaps discuss it with each other as well. Um, and I think if we say we will resume at 11.15 in the first instance, is that all right? Thank you. Okay. Good. All right.